Oh yeah, this video is about to get weird. <laughs> what is up everyone, Nick here, and today I have something pretty, uh, let's say special for you guys today. For this video, we're going to be doing something completely different from other videos. This is not 3D printed, as you can probably tell. We're going to be modifying a Iron Man toy mask. And this video wouldn't be possible without this channel sponsor, PCBWay. So I know what you might be wondering. Nick, what are you doing under my kitchen sink? That's kind of weird. That's besides the point. Okay, so the real question is why did I make this and how did I make this? Well, let's get into that. So last weekend I went to the Midwest Rep Rap Festival. It's a 3D printing convention in Goshen, Indiana. And I got the chance to meet up with a bunch of my friends and we had a lot of fun. And among those friends is Levy 3 d And at one point we decided to go to a target and we found this monstrosity yo we got the deal 3d mark 85 <laughs> yo it's the deal 3d mark 85 it's motorized these files way better than those files oh way better oh way yo better. nah bro why did bro do me like that <laughs> but we are going to be breaking down most of the things I did to this helmet. We're going to take it apart. I'm gonna cover some of the details about it. So you should have a really, really good idea of how to build your own if you want to. Personally, I think this is a really cool option if you don't have a 3D printer already and you really wanna motorize some sort of faceplate because there is absolutely nothing that has been 3D printed here. This is just the faceplate and some electronics. So without further ado, I'm gonna start disassembling this thing and I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like up close. So before I open this thing, I just wanna show you the back of this so basically I have a battery pack that is literally zip tied to the elastics and there's also this USB cable that goes from the battery into this slot right here that I cut up using just a pair of pliers and I also have this wire right here which is our button which you could probably glue on the inside of the faceplate and just trigger it I just haven't had the time to actually glue this in place so let me just unplug this take out the battery from the zip ties and we can start unscrewing this thing. But basically there are screws all around this edge here and there are screws down here and this will allow us to open everything up. But before I unscrew this, I just wanna show you one last thing. This battery compartment right here, there are no screws. You're basically meant to pop this off, unscrew the cover and the battery's supposed to be there. But I hollowed this out, that way I have easy access to the electronics from here. So let's unscrew this. So this is unscrewed. This should just pop off like so. And this just moves out of the way. All right, so. <laughs> I'm just gonna unplug the PCB board just so it's out of the way. And this is the inside of the faceplate. So as you can see, I took out some of the screw posts. I also removed some of the ridges that were there for support or for injection molding. I'm not really quite sure. And as you can probably tell, there's only one servo operating this whole thing. And since this toy only pivoted off of this one arm that went across right here, this means that this faceplate didn't need any helper arms, didn't need any servo arms. It just needed one servo. So once we carved out everything that we needed to make room for the servo, we basically cut this pivot arm in half to make room for the servo and then we took the servo horn arm that little black arm that comes with your servos and we melted it into the plastic because both the servo arms and the faceplate are both made out of ABS. This means that we can easily melt them together using a soldering iron. So just like you would PLA weld parts together with a soldering iron, we did the exact same thing, but with ABS. Now please do this in a ventilated area. These fumes are pretty toxic and they're just not good to breathe in. So please have at least a window open nearby so you can stand next to it. All right, we, we want to make sure that we want to make sure that they that the plastic is nice and cool before we continue any farther. Yeah, you always want to chill your props. Make sure that you chill the props to the to the proper temperature. The proper temperature. Oh, this guy right here, this guy right here. He and once the arm was fused into the faceplate, we made sure that the servo was properly aligned with this pivot. And once we made sure it was aligned, we just super glued that servo right into place. And once the servo was up and running, it was just a process of trying to close things together. They wouldn't close properly. We'd find what was causing issues, carve that away with the pliers or with the soldering iron, and repeat that process until all the parts would sit flush together. It really was that simple. So with that said, I'm gonna put this back together and we're gonna put the electronics back in. There we go. Okay, so all this is aligned. Now I just have to put the screws in. Uh, I am, oh, there's the other screw. There's the screw hole, there's the screw hole. 
Honestly, if you really wanted to, you could easily add cosplay LED eyes to this thing. But Levy 3D and I, we wanted to keep this as stock as possible. So we just kept the plastic hut in and called it a day. Okay, so that's all reassembled. Now I just have to put the electronics back in. So again, if you haven't watched it already, I highly recommend checking out the motorization tutorial that I posted last week. With that video, you're going to be able to motorize this thing. Let me just plug this into, so I'm currently plugged into servo two. So that plugs in there. I'm going to unplug the power and feed it through that hole I made. That way I can plug it back into the board. And same thing with the switch. I'm going to feed it through the hole I made in the back, bring it all the way back out, plug it into the board just like so, and then stuff it all back in. Then get that cover. Put it there and clip it in. There we go. So, just need to slap the battery back on and we'll call it a day. Let me just plug this bad boy back in. Slap it on my beautiful, beautiful face. And hit the switch. There we go. So I'm not exaggerating when I say that this took Levy 3D and I maybe 30 minutes to make on a whim. However, I don't recommend it for adults to wear because, oh my lord, my face hurts. <laughs> but it works. I can't believe I made this. It's so stupid, yet it works so well. <laughs> what the hell? Man, half the time I try motorizing faceplates and they don't work this good. So I guess this just goes to show how easy it is to motorize an Iron Man helmet. I know that this is just one servo and there's no helper arms or anything, but still. It proves my point, and my point is anybody can do this sort of thing. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, my brain. Why are you so small yet so cool? That's what they say about me. <laughs>